Hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show. In this video, we'll look at the fourth dimension to medicine, chronotherapy. So yes, this video will be all about chronotherapy and how time can play a really important aspect to medicine. So firstly, we'll talk about what it is, then I'll give some examples of where we know it might be effective, and then I'll discuss where the current research is and some issues with the application of chronotherapy in the future. So chronotherapy goes hand in hand with circadian rhythm, and so I recently did a video where I looked at how defects in the circadian rhythm can cause disease, but this video will look at the opposite, and we'll look at how knowledge of the circadian clock can help us prevent disease. And despite the lack of views, I recently re-watched that video, and it's actually quite good, so um, I recommend watching it. Anyway, back to this video. So this video is about chronotherapy, and so chronotherapy is the treatment of an illness or a disorder by administering a drug at a certain time of the day. And the logic behind this is because it coincides with the natural rhythms, or the circadian rhythms, they're so called, that goes on in our biology. So what is the circadian rhythm? So circadian rhythms are biological processes that occur with about a 24 hour period. And so on this clock of health, there are certain uh, events that happen throughout the day because they are regulated by the circadian clock. And so I have a video on that as well, which would go into way more detail. The point is, is that different things happen at different times of the day. And there's a very complicated and interesting biology that underpins that. And so this video will look at chromotherapy or the field of chromopharmacology, which is basically, it analyzes how the metabolism of drugs and mammals vary according to the time of day. So fun but slightly irrelevant fact for this video, chrono comes from chronos, which comes from Greek mythology. But there's two other terms that you need to understand before we go further into this video. And so that is pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. So pharmacokinetics is effectively what the body does to a drug, whereas pharmacodynamics is what the drug does to a body. And so both of these processes are affected by the circadian rhythm. And so this video will look at why when is so important for medicine. And the simple answer is simply twofold. The idea behind chronotherapy is to increase the efficacy of a drug, but also to reduce the side effects that can also come with therapies. So you may be wondering why so much of biology is regulated by a 24 hour cycle. And I mean, whether it's 24 hours or if we evolved in a different planet, the central purpose of having regulation over different biological processes is simply to coordinate processes that are compatible so that they happen at the same time and to separate incompatible processes. So a very bad example that I thought of is, let's say someone's dropping litter on the floor and someone's got to pick it up. Incompatible. Why doesn't just one person do it? It's less efficient. I realise that isn't a very good example, but I've done it now, it's too late. But a biological example would be an enzyme that creates a substance and an enzyme that destroys that same substance being there at the same time. That would be an incompatible and inefficient thing to do. Anyway, back to these two terms then, and let's look at pharmacokinetics first, what the body does to a drug. So there's four key uh, terms that are associated with pharmacokinetics, absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion of a drug. And so these properties are all really important for understanding the pharmacokinetics of a drug. And lo and behold, they are also circadian re circadianly regulated. And so these different properties are affected by a variety of different processes, such as feeding cycles, your activity levels, the blood flow rate, gastric emptying, I'll leave it at that. Uh, but what we'll look at is the circadian regula regulation of expression levels of metabolic enzymes. So these are the enzymes that might get rid of the drug, they might affect the drug in a certain way that then activates the drug. And a big family of these enzymes are the cytochrome P450 enzymes. And so they, as I said, they're involved in drug metabolism and they are also known to be circadianly regulated. So depending on when the drug is taken, the drug metabolism may vary. So the second concept is pharmacodynamics, what the drug does to the body. So the key question with pharmacodynamics then 
is what is the activity of the drug target. And so due to the circadian regulation, we know that the activity levels of certain enzymes vary throughout the day. So in a hypothetical situation, let's say that at daytime this activity level was low. And so if a drug was targeting that target, that protein, that enzyme, it would be maybe a bad time to take it in the morning because the drug target isn't present. I say maybe because it also depends on the pharmacokinetics of the drug and so it might not be metabolized correctly in the same time that the drug target is present and so it's actually quite complicated to you know make predictions about different drugs even if you know the expression levels of the drug target but one good example that we do have is that it seems to be better to take statins at night time and so this isn't the case for all statins there are different variations of them but statins are to lower cholesterol levels and many studies have shown that night time is the best time to take it it's more effective and has less side effects and so given that 80 percent of drug targets show circadian expression there's a lot of potential use for so-called clocking the drug and so it'd be really interesting to see how this information can further enhance the correct timings of drugs. So to aid this research, it'd be really good to try and identify certain classes of drugs where it could be more effective to use chronotherapy. And so one property of a drug in particular that would be important is the half-life of the drug. So not all drugs are the same. Some drugs, their half-life is very short and could be pretty much gone from the body within an hour. Other drugs, they could be present for 24 hours. And so the shorter the half-life of the drug, it's more likely, in theory, that timing the taking of that drug is more important because it's around for a shorter period of time. And so anything less than 15 hours could potentially have a correct time or a better time to take that drug. So where are we at with current research then? How often is chronotherapy actually used? Well, one area of study where it is seeming like it's going to be very effective is cancer therapy. And so actually quite old study, well, I say old because it's old, well, <laughs> I was quite young when the study came out, is a metastatic colorectal cancer where patients who received chronotherapy had less side effects and so also chemotherapies are pretty horrific in terms of side effects so any way of trying to reduce the amount of side effects is pretty phenomenal and so it's really exciting where that research could take us in the future but besides clocking the drug you can also drug the clock and target the components of the circadian clock itself and so in a previous video, I talked about the core clock components and there are four main proteins that are involved, um, which I won't go into detail now, just, just know that they exist. And they also regulate expression of other proteins such as RevUp. And so, or RevUp, I'm not actually too sure how to say it. And there was a 2018 study that reactivated this protein. And so this protein is involved in the circadian clock by a chemical mechanism of the regulation of the 24 hour period and by reactivating it in mice with glioblastoma they actually improved the survival rate and given that the circadian clock is often disrupted in cancer there's a lot of potential that reactivating the clock components itself drugging the clock could be a really effective mechanism for cancer therapy so I said that all quite fast, so apologies, but besides cancer, there's also great advances being made in treating inflammatory and metabolic diseases. And also there's advances being made in neuroscience as well. And indeed, there is a 24 hour regulation of the permeability of the blood brain barrier, which is important for drug, um, getting drugs to the brain. And also uh, the astrocytes that are in the brain also show activity levels that fluctuate throughout the day. So what research is needed to further understand the efficacy of chronotherapy? Well, it all comes down to being able to identify the right targets and the correct diseases that would actually benefit from chronotherapy. So to be able to identify the right targets, what we would really need is genome-wide and tissue-wide maps that show which different genes are expressed with a circadian rhythm 
And obviously, the thing is, gene expression doesn't just dictate if that protein level is going to fluctuate. So you also need the proteome measurement at different times of the day. And even just having the presence of the protein doesn't necessarily mean it's active because proteins themselves can get modified and that can fluctuate throughout the day. And then there's the metabolome, how different uh, substances in the cells as well vary throughout the day. And so, yeah, this is very complicated and is by no means a simple task to undertake. And besides that, there are other issues such as how does it change um, by sex, by age, how does it vary depending on the disease, disease date. We study normal circadian rhythm, is that the same as someone who has a disease? Also, most studies have been done in mouse and rats and they're nocturnal, we're diurnal species. And, you know, what about sleeping, exercise, how does that affect chronotherapy? And so, um, going back to age, we know that the circadian rhythm dampens as you age. So, you know, would that make chronotherapy less effective or could it be more effective? Um, and secondly, um, looking at a specific studies in mice and rats where they increase the lifespan through caloric restriction, they see an increased expression of enzymes in the liver that are involved in drug metabolism. So how could we harness that potential as well for treatment? So there is evidently a lot of exciting research yet to come. And so going back to my title, The Fourth Dimension, what do I mean by that? Well, we have the right targets, the right dose, the right patient, and importantly, we know from all this evidence that the right time will also be important. So hopefully in this video, I've tried to convince you why chronotherapy has a lot of potential because it can increase the efficacy and also try to decrease the side effects that are associated with taking a variety of drugs. And so this could save money and also just will generally just be beneficial. <laughs> um, and so obviously time will tell, winky face, uh, uh, I, I stole that pun, but you know, time will tell if any of this will end up being seen in different treatment therapies. But I think it's got a lot of potential and I'm pretty excited to see what we will uncover in the coming years. So as always, thanks for listening.